The playbook for the NFL draft in Detroit was years in the making, and tonight our city is shining for the big show. Hundreds of thousands of NFL football fans are gathered in downtown Detroit right now watching the lives of young athletes change forever. Fox News' Dave Kimson is in the middle of it all, and he joins us live with more on the draft's first night. Dave. Yeah, I'll tell you what, this is a moment right here and right now for everyone to do one big touchdown dance in unison because this is a major score for the city of Detroit, already breaking records already. We're talking about 275,000 fans on night one of the draft. That's a, all that's a record that beats the 2018 record in Nashville, just over 200,000. So Detroit doing it up right and doing it up in style. Oh, yeah. Like pilgrims on a spiritual journey, legions of pro football fans descend upon their sacred city for the coveted ceremony of selection, an NFL draft where their next gridiron god shall ascend to their rightful place amongst the legends of old. And they've even come from overseas. Lauren and Daniel are cheeseheads from Manchester. Long fly, but we <laughs> love coming to the States. We managed yeah. to get to the Super Bowl in February as well. So we went to Vegas, yeah, now Detroit. So First time in Detroit. This Dallas fan came came in all decked out. It's a little bit cowboy, it's a little bit uh, wrestling, ruchador wrestling, and a little bit of the culture, yeah. the Mexican culture. The NFL experience has it all, from gigantic helmets repping each franchise to a tent where you can check out some of those iconic Super Bowl rings from over the years. We, we just got here a little while ago. We've been uh, walking around. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, it's packed, which is awesome. So we're, we're hoping to enjoy the three days. And we found what Lions fans, all of us, have been looking for all all these years right there the Vince Lombardi trophy in all its glory oh yeah so this is a dream country for us love it but some fans only have their dreams to live the NFL experience through this was gonna be my moment you know what I had a uh, bad ACL tear in high school and you know what it ended my career it sucked but you know what I'm here right now and you know I might get picked late seventh round you never know I'm here <laughs> or you at least have the NFL experience I, you know what that's what I'm here for you can I'm look here. at the trophy you can, can look at the ring you know I got a picture of the Lombardi trophy today it felt good despite the competitive chase of hopeful champions there is clearly one victor on this first night. Yes, that trophy goes to our great city, shining on for all the world to see. What do you think of Detroit? Loved it. The food has been unreal. Oh, yeah. Been Apparently the dirtier the food, the better. <laughs> this is Lafayette, Coney Island, yeah. Hudson Cafe. Yeah. We've loved it. The food's been great. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Awesome. Loved it. And I'm a big Eminem fan as well, so <laughs> so that's been that's been interesting. Yeah. Yes. So even better, right? Yeah. Detroit. I need yeah. to try mom's spaghetti. <laughs> there you go. I tell you what, you know, this is such a big moment to, that they actually had to uh, shut down some of the events early, because, not shut them down, but close doors because they reached capacity. But you know what? People still got a great bite to eat. They got a drink. They got to watch everything on TV and uh, shop, do some shopping. And, you know, they're going to get right back out there tomorrow early in the morning. You know, how about my Paul Stanley impression? All right, Detroit, you know how, well, you know what this is. This is what we do. No one does it better than you. Right back at you. All right, you know, you well said, my man. Hey, uh, Dave, you know, when you take a look at what people are doing in between the hotel stay and the football, they're eating out, and you heard them talk about the food, and yes, Coney Island and Hudson Cafe are great, but there are so many restaurants up there. I've been hearing rave reviews on, on, on formerly Twitter X about how much people are loving the culinary taste of Detroit as well. Oh, yeah, you know, a lot of people have come up to us and said it's like a slice of New York. It's like a, like a slice of Chicago or other cities. Um, they're absolutely loving their fine dining. They're enjoying it. And, uh, yeah, no doubt they've had rave reviews. And many people say that this is their first time here. They're going to come back before too long as well. All right. Dave Kinchin, uh, we should mention, Terry and Arnold was just, uh, we traded up for Terry and Arnold. That's just in right now. That's a big deal. So that just happened literally moments ago, they're telling us. Terry and Arnold, get ready to hear that name as a cornerback for, for the, the Detroit, Detroit Lions. Lions. Yes. All right, exciting times. Well, we knew going into hosting the NFL draft that the biggest football fanatics were going to be right here in the Motor City. Yeah, that didn't prepare us for the costumes we were going to <laughs> see, which were pretty spectacular. Yeah. Fox News, Jessica Dubnak got a front row seat this one, uh, she's here now with more on these cast of characters. <laughs>
Uh, yeah, I think you saw that 10 o'clock live shot. Definitely a lot of characters here in Greektown and beyond. Setting the scene a little bit for you guys. Greektown has really been kind of the offshoot place to hang out. Lots of parties, lots of screens up everywhere for people to watch the draft and what's going on in the campus marshes area. Kind of dwindling down a little bit. People are petering out on this first day of the draft, but it'll be going for the next couple of days. Let's take a look at some video of some of these costumes that people showed out in today. It was pretty hilarious. People have no shame. People are very prideful for their teams that are in full representation. We talked to some of these folks. Take a listen. I got my extra large hat and my custom made Rory chain. Oh, this chain represents the Detroit Lions, baby, the grit that we go through. Uh, this is huge, baby. This is what we do here. My outfit, I got all this uh, cape. I got the dreads. I got the helmet. I got the whole Viking look. Got to represent. Got to represent the cheese. Got to represent the cheese. Hey, go back, go. Go back, go, baby. First and foremost, the belt is the centerpiece of this. That's my grandfather in the Washington Redskins marching band. Been doing this for 13 years. It was uh, basically my name's Anthony, and it was inspired by Tony. My daughter actually started it about 13 years ago. Put some face paint on one of the game, and here I am. It's a little bit cowboy. It's a little bit uh, wrestling, luchador wrestling, and a little bit of the culture, the Mexican culture. Just try to get the most outrageous stuff we own and wear it here. That's how we dress every day. Yeah, I dress like this every day. I am from Mexico, and I am the first international fan of uh, uh, Houston, Texas. I am happy to be here. All right, back out here live in Greektown where the party is still going on night one of the draft. Now, if you're thinking about coming down, it's really not too bad to navigate. Detroit police doing a heck of a job keeping everybody in line. If you do decide to come to Greektown the next couple of days, uh, be prepared. You will go through some metal detectors, lots of police presence, but the streets are closed down. There's food trucks, there's drinks, and plenty of good people watching, reporting live in Greektown. Jessica Dubnac on the edge. Jessica, you know, there's a lot of thought that goes into these costumes, a lot of thought, a lot of effort. Um, it makes you um, wonder just how much time they put into these <laughs> to make themselves shine like they did. It was really amusing to see. Unbelievable. Some of the face paint, it's like, uh, how much time did you put into putting those whiskers and everything? But it's all part of the ambiance here, uh, and, and you can feel it. You can feel it. We're oh, just yeah. getting started. Well, we sure are. First day breaking attendance records. I mean, hey, it's just the beginning. We can't wait for the rest. Thanks, Jessica. Yeah, you know, hosting an outdoor event in April can be a gamble in Detroit. We know that with opening yeah. day that happens, of course, <laughs> here as well. Uh, it was a bit cool today, but the sun was shining on the city. But it's going to get better from here, right, It's going to get warmer starting tomorrow. 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 Yes. Uh, let me walk over to the wall and show you. There is a pattern change underway. Uh, the cold air that's been around for the last 36 hours is finally starting to retreat, and that means warmer air is coming our way beginning Friday afternoon. And for the weekend, we have chances at 80 degrees. You'll see it all coming up with the numbers right now. Clear skies out there, and as a result, it's going to be cold again. We do have more frost concerns, especially where these freeze warnings are in effect uh, west and north of the city. A better chance to get down below 32. How about live pictures from the Sioux Locks? 37 degrees there, pretty cold up in northern Michigan. We made it to 55 today. How about that morning low? 28 degrees. There's the record this morning. 26 at way back in 1892. Right now, a lot of us in that 40 to 45 degree range with a light flow from the east. The cold air begins to retreat tomorrow. Look at that, Minneapolis, 58 degrees. So a breezy, milder pattern sets in for us Friday afternoon, Friday evening. Now, Saturday, we're going to have a warm front cross the area, and that means a few morning showers possible. Most of the weekend is going to be rain-free. All the big active weather is going to be way down to our west and southwest. For the rest of tonight, areas of frost, it's going to be cold again, down to 36, but cold Colder in the outlying areas tomorrow, 65. How about that? 65. And then notice in the seven day forecast, closer to 80 around here on yeah. Sunday. A mild pattern into next week as well. Rupin Tarrant, a full check at 4 a.m. Thanks, Rich. Well, today's sunshine did help make our city shine across the globe. Yeah, it certainly did. We spoke to Governor Whitmer about what this event means for Detroit and Michigan as a whole. 
This is an opportunity for us to show the world what's happening in Detroit, what's happening in Michigan, putting our best foot forward. I mean, there's so much exciting stuff, and you, sometimes you got to come in and see it. Some people operate with old notions about Detroit or about Michigan. When you come here and see it with your own eyes, it just stuns people about the excitement and the cool things that we have to offer. So much cool stuff to offer here. Oh, we, yeah, we had a good time talking to her, too, because yeah. uh, she fit us that she had, you know, so many things going on, but uh, very prideful as well because the city has come, the state really has come a long way. And it is about the whole region. And by the way, as you take a look this way, all these ants marching behind <laughs> us, this is a live picture of Detroit right now. As soon as the Lions pick was, uh, was yes. picked with Arnold, they're all kind of walking out and saying, okay, time to go home for tonight. Because they probably have to work, <laughs> even though people aren't today. working. We figured out a lot of people are playing hooky today. They, they were. Yeah. They had the Honolulu blue cold. That's what they had. <laughs> Detroit Mayor Mike Duggan took office at a time of uncertainty when the city was in bankruptcy. Yeah, we all remember that. But now, a decade later, we're welcoming hundreds of thousands of visitors to Detroit. The narrative about Detroit is changing. I woke up this morning and there were two positive stories about Detroit in the New York Times and I thought I must be dreaming. Well, people are visiting here from cities all across America and the ones I've talked to, some have never been to Detroit, others haven't been to Detroit in years and they all say, this isn't what I expected. Uh, and uh, we think that's, you know, probably the most important thing is not the economic impact in the next three days, which will be great, but do people come back and say, I'm going to come see a Tiger game this summer. i got to bring my family back to Detroit. I'm, you know, I'm a college kid thinking about where I was going to look for a job. Now Detroit's in the mix. A business owner who says, I was wondering where my next site is. Detroit's in the mix. That's what we're trying to do. Isn't that the truth? And so when they true. see big things happening here, people want to be part of it. And uh, the domino effect continues. A safe, walkable, viable downtown, something that so many of us can be so proud of. So, yeah, this is a great moment for our city. All right, Detroit. Well, there is so much excitement with the city hosting the draft. But what is making the moment all the more special is, of course, our Detroit Lions. And we're coming off the team's best season in more than 30 years. Yeah, the Lions just traded up to get Terrion Arnold, a cornerback out of Alabama. That's huge news. Fans are wondering, though, who else the team may pick that could hopefully take us to that next level. 